Do you have to do an SEO audit, but you just don't know where to start? Well, in this video, I want to share my simple method of doing a comprehensive SEO audit that works for any type of website. Let's get started. So when I do an SEO audit, I like to keep it simple and just focus on the most impactful things. So I organize all of the elements into four main pillars. So this is my very simple SEO audit checklist that beginners can use. Okay, so the first pillar we have is the content pillar. Now this is all about the content of the website. So basically everything that you can visually see. So you would check things like the meta tags, keywords, internal linking, and the URL structure of your pages. The next pillar is experience. Now this is all about how easy is the website to use. So taking a look at the site speed, making sure it's mobile responsive, and checking to see if there are any broken links. The third pillar is the authority pillar. This is where we check the authoritativeness of the website. So we're gonna be looking at the backlinks. And the last pillar, and personally, I think this is the most important pillar. So we wanna check if the website is in search engines. Now, if it is not in search engines, then really anything that you do in terms of content, experience, and authority really doesn't matter because if people uh, cannot find it in search engines, then really nothing else matters. So indexation is extremely important here. Now we can manually check many of these things, but to speed things up, I like to use a browser add-on called SEO Checker. Now, if you go to seochecker.io, you can install this for Chrome, Edge, or Firefox. And what's great is that you can use this for any website. So after you install this, just give it any URL and the tool will crawl all the pages and give you a report that looks something like this. So when it comes to the meta tags, I like to focus on the pages titles, um, their descriptions, alt image tags, and the header tags. So to check these, you can click on the SEO analysis dropdown, and you could see at the left-hand side whether or not all of the pages have a title, and this is a green check, so that means all of my pages do have a title tag, but only 63% have title lengths that are optimal. So to check the ones that are um, too long or too short, we can click into this report and we could see all of these pages with the title and the length. And SEO Checker states that the title length should be between 10 to 60 characters. And taking a look at the lengths in um, this list right here, we do have a handful that are too long. So what we would need to do is make sure we shorten these title tags. You can also take a look at the page headings as well. Now, every page of your website should have one H1 heading. And it looks like for this website, only 94% have one H1 heading. Now, this specific page does not have an H1 heading, so you would need to add one for this URL. But it looks like the other pages, we are all set here. And with the page descriptions, every page should have an optimized meta description. Now, most of the pages of this website do have the description, so we would need to add one for uh, this page. Now, this one is a sitemap. I think it's okay that this one doesn't have a page description because most likely this sitemap page would not be ranking for anyone that's typing in a related uh, keyword. It would be other uh, content-heavy pages. And keep in mind, the uh, meta description are the descriptions that are just below the page titles in the search results. So this is the meta description right here. And for this site, this is the meta description. So you wanna make sure it describes what the page is about. And also these blue links are the page titles. And when it comes to the length of the page descriptions, I would keep it at around 150 characters or less. SEO Checker also checks the length. So if you click on to this report, you can see a handful of pages that either are too long or too short. 
Now, SEO Checker states that you should aim for descriptions that are between 100 to 320 characters, but the sweet spot is about 150. So try to aim for that. And the last element under the content pillar are the alt image tags. So under the page content section, you can see whether or not the pages on your site have alt image tags, and it looks like 78% of them do. Now let me click into this report right here, and there are four URLs that are missing alt image tags, and you can see exactly how many tags are missing. So this one has four that are missing. This one has 64, which is quite a bit, 22 and eight. Now, alt image tags are essentially the words and phrases that describe images on your site. It helps search engines understand what the images are about, and it also helps your visitors who are visually impaired. So when they are browsing their site, they'll understand what the images are about through the alt image tags. The next element under the uh, content pillar are the keywords. So what you want to do is map one keyword per page. Now to help you determine what the best keyword is for every single page of your website, you can check in your Google Search Console or the Keywords Everywhere report. Let's take a look at Google Search Console first. So in your Google Search Console account, if you click on search results, you'll see a list of pages at the bottom right here and click on any of the pages and it'll take you to this report, this queries report, that shows you all of the queries that are ranking for this specific URL in Google. Now you'll notice these first four columns here. Now this comes from the Keywords Everywhere browser add-on. So if you go to keywordseverywhere.com, you can install this for Chrome, Firefox, or Edge. And once you uh, turn it on, you'll be able to see these four columns. So this is the average monthly search volume, the average cost per click, which comes from Google Ads, including the competition score, and the search volume over the past 12 months. So in this queries report, I like to sort by clicks and also take a close look at impressions, and also the average monthly search volume. So we can see here for this example uh, page, how much to tint car windows. This is an automotive uh, website. We can see over the past three months, this page received 166 clicks with close to 10,000 impressions. It's ranking on the first page, and we can see the average monthly search volume for this keyword, this search phrase, is close to 15 thousand per month and that's one of the highest keywords that have the most search volume here so this would be my target keyword for this page so i would make sure that this keyword is in the page title and also the meta description now you also notice this one here window tinting near me this one has 550,000 searches per month but you want to make sure that the keywords are relevant to the content of the page this first one is much more relevant, so this would be the keyword that I would map to this page. Now, another way to find your target keyword is by using a browser add-on called Keywords Everywhere. So if you go to keywordseverywhere.com, you can install this browser add-on for Chrome, Firefox, or Edge. So if you search for a keyword that's associated uh, with your page, you could also do a site colon search. So that looks uh, like this. So you would type in site colon and your domain, and you can view all of the pages that are inside Google. And if you hover over the search traffic row, this comes from Keywords Everywhere, okay? So you could see total keywords that this URL ranks for and also the total keywords that the entire website ranks for. Now this website is pretty thin in terms of pages and content, but if I go to you know a different page, for example, like this uh, ranking page has 88 total keywords that rank for um, this page on Google. And if you click on that link, Keywords Everywhere will show you the top keywords for this URL, and they list them out right here, and they show you the estimated traffic, the SERP position, and the average monthly search volume. So I would look at the estimated traffic column and also the volume column and see which one is the most relevant for my page. I think it's either one of these uh, two keywords here, and then map either of these two keywords to that page. So that's how you do keyword mapping. 
Next is internal linking. So you want to make sure you have internal links with keywords that are optimized. So in the body content of your page, you wanna make sure you are linking to other pages on your website. So this is an internal link right here. So best ultrasonic diffuser guide. And this one links to the best ultrasonic diffusers page. Okay, so you wanna make sure the anchor text so the clickable text has your target keyword in it. This makes it descriptive for the readers and also search engines so they know exactly what this linked page is all about. Next is the URL structure. So you wanna make sure your URLs are short and keyword optimized. This is the URL. So the folder is humidifier versus uh, diffuser. So it's short and keyword optimized. You don't want a URL that's extremely long or has random characters in it. You wanna make sure it just has your target keyword and really that's it. So the next pillar in our comprehensive SEO audit is experience, okay? So you wanna make sure your site loads fast. So to check the site speed, I like to use the Page Speed Insights tool from Google. So if you put your website's uh, URL right here and click on Analyze, Google will crawl your entire website and give you an overall performance score for mobile and also for desktop. So a score of 100 is the best score you can get. And for this website, it's scoring really well, so it's um, loading uh, really fast. You can also check the security analysis report inside SEO Checker to give you more details into what might be impacting the speed of your website. Keep in mind that the Page Speed Insights report also gives you some very descriptive diagnostics as well, and it can pinpoint you in terms of what to focus on and fix to improve your site speed for mobile and for desktop. So you have two reports essentially to analyze uh, your website's uh, speed. Next, you wanna make sure your site is mobile responsive. So you can check the site on your mobile device. That's probably the easiest way. Or you could use SEO Checker. So if you go to SEO Analysis and under Page Content, you can see is mobile scaling set. So this checks to make sure you have the right page scaling properties set. So this is a green check. So all of the pages for this site are properly set for uh, mobile devices. So we are good here. Now, even though this is a green check, I always like to make sure that it really does look good on mobile and that all of the images, the text, it's readable, it's easy to scroll, nothing is overlapping, things like that. So it's always good to actually physically check your websites. Next, we have the authority column. So how authoritative is the website? So we need to check the backlinks. And we could check the backlinks with the help of keywords everywhere. So on Google, you could do a site colon search. So you could type in um, site colon and your domain, and you could view all of the pages that are indexed in Google right here. And if you hover over the Moz uh, row, this comes from keywords everywhere. And you could see the domain authority. So it's from zero to 100. 100 means it's the most authoritative. You could see the domain authority trend, the spam score, link propensity, how many websites are linking, and also how many total backlinks are linking as well. And then you could see the domain authority over time. So ideally, you want the domain authority to be trending upwards or remain pretty steady and consistent. Now, if I go to these search results right here with websites that are much larger, if we hover over the Moz row, we can see the link metrics for this site. So it's a 66 out of 100 in terms of the domain authority. We can see how many sites are linking to this and also how many backlinks as well. So quite a bit. And the domain authority has been pretty steady over time, which is a good sign. It's not going low, which is not something that you want. So determine whether or not your domain authority and the number of domains and backlinks you have is either good or bad. You should compare your metrics with the metrics of the other pages that are ranking in the search engines, okay? So looking at your competitors is a great indicator on whether or not your own link metrics are either on the right track or they need help to improve. Lastly, we have the indexation column of our um, SEO audit uh, checklist. 
So this is where we check whether or not the pages on our site is indexed. The easiest and most direct way is checking the Google search results. So again, I like to use the site colon search. So for this one, we can see all of the pages for uh, this website. So what you want to do is just make sure all of your pages are being indexed. But if you see a page that is not indexed here, then what you should do is make sure that the page is in the sitemap. And to check the sitemap, you can actually visit uh, the sitemap. So this is um, the sitemap for um, that website. So the URL for the sitemap should be something like this, your domain forward slash sitemap.xml, all right? So when you type uh, this URL in, you can see this site has uh, three sitemaps here. So we can see the page sitemap. So we, we wanna make sure all the pages are listed right here. If it's not, then you want to add it to the sitemap. That way it has a better chance of ranking in the search engines. Now, the other way to check for indexation is through SEO Checker. So under the Explore Website section, if you scroll down to indexing, we can see how many indexable pages there are. And it says there's 18 and there's one non-indexable page, one no index page, and also the same for this one, one no follow page. So let's click on the non-indexable pages. So it looks like this one is non-indexable. So you wanna make sure that this is a page that you actually want to show up in search engines. If it is, then just make sure you add it to the sitemap and you want to make sure this page is being set as indexable if you have an SEO plugin, if this is a WordPress website. But in any uh, CMS, there should be an option to make sure any page is indexable. So just make sure you switch that on. Okay, so these are the most impactful elements that make up the comprehensive SEO audit. Of course, there are many other elements you can check. So if you use SEO Checker, you could view all of these reports on the left-hand side to do an even deeper analysis. So go ahead and download this browser extension and try it out. So hopefully you thought this video was helpful. If you did, smash that like button and also subscribe to our channel. And if you wanna check out our other videos, feel free to click any of the ones on the screen. Thanks.